In this video, I cover everything you need to know about Flickr and red light therapy panel. Hey guys, Alex here from AlexFlickr.com. Let me turn this off. Yes, this video, we're gonna cover Flickr. Now, this is the first of what I've been referring to as my education series on all things red light therapy. I want this series to be about red light therapy panels, red light therapy products, red light therapy light, and less about the health side of things when it comes to red light therapy. So we're gonna learn about things such as flicker, wavelength, pulsing, uh, irradiance, treatment area, beam angle, all those common features that you see when you're shopping around red light therapy devices. I'm gonna break them down, explain what you need to know, what you need to look out for, um, what's good, what's bad, that sort, of, that sort of thing. So if you're keen to learn more about this, yeah, be sure to subscribe, because um, I'm gonna be doing one of these videos every month for a while now, so uh, yeah, have heaps of cool content, and I'll still be doing my reviews, my news, and all that other neat stuff. So first things first, what is Flickr? Well, it is effectively the change in brightness from a light. So if we have an LED, light as we do behind us we have the mito red mito pro 1500 here if there was flicker in here the light would be the led light would be bright and then it would drop off it may drop off completely or more often than not it would only drop a little bit uh, maybe 20 percent of the the overall brightness i should also mention this panel here has no flicker mito red mito pro has no flicker i'm just putting that out there this is just uh the panel i've been testing and using lately so here it is. So a good way to think of light flicker is a strobe light. You know, you've all seen strobe lights at parties, on, off, on, off flickering. Uh, it can create some pretty neat effects, you know, visually. Uh, it can have some even harmful effects. People can get headaches, migraines, or even worse, seizures from this flickering um, strobing effect. Now that is quite an extreme example of flicker. Uh, it is very pronounced. The on, off is very... I mean, it's effectively 100% on, 100% off, right? Um, and it is typically used with very bright lights. Now, there's a lot of flicker in day-to-day -day life, uh, in, in modern day-to-day -day life. LED light bulbs, uh, modern cars with their LED lights, um, they often have a lot of flicker in them. Uh, screens, it, it's everywhere. So it's, it's not something radically new, it's not something that's gonna cause the end of the world or anything like that, but it is out there. And for some, this flicker does cause quite a lot of issues. Headaches, eye strain, productivity issues, concentration issues, all sorts of things. Now, just like many things in life, some people are affected more than others. So if we think about asthma um, or hay fever, I, in summertime here on our farm, we do hay, there's lots of dust around, pollen, all that sort of stuff. It's never affected me. I'm always out there throwing hay around, you know, out in the paddocks, never had an issue. Meanwhile, a neighbor I grew up with, he suffered from hay fever. As soon as the grass started to go into seed, he'd have lots of issues and he couldn't even go near a hay paddock. Now, when it comes to flicker, it's the same sort of thing. Some people can be sitting under light bulbs that are flickering for eight, 10 hours a day and no, have no issues. Other people know as soon as they go into a room, hey, that light isn't, uh, isn't good for me. I've got eye strain, I've got a headache, I don't feel well. So it's, it's the same thing with flicker. When it comes to flicker though, it is important to note that there are two key variables. Now, I have a spectrometer here. It's for the Hopo color spectrometer. I use it when I test and review all my red light therapy panels. It's neat, it shows irradiance, wavelengths, but it also detects flicker. Now, if you've seen any of my reviews, you may have actually seen the screen where I, I share the data when I, I test the flicker in these panels. It actually gives me four readings. Uh, so there are a, a quite a few ways to measure flicker, but the main two metrics I'm looking at are flicker hertz or frequency and flicker percent. Now, flicker hertz is the amount of times that the light is changing, i.e. flickering, in a second. So you may see something like 60 hertz, which would be 60 times a second. Um, the other reading is flicker percent. Now, what, what this shows is the change in brightness. So if the light is on at you know, 100% and then it drops down to 50%, half the, half the brightness, then the flicker percent will be 50%. If the light goes from all on to all off, like the strobe example I was talking about earlier, that would be 100%. Now you could have two LEDs with the same flicker frequency, let's say 100 hertz, but one of these LEDs has a flicker percent of say 80%, and the other one has only a flicker percent of 10%. The one with the 80% is gonna cause, potentially cause, 
more issues than the one <clears throat> that's only dropping off 10%. In fact, the one with 10% isn't going to be that big of an issue or, <clears throat> at all because it's such a minor difference. The 80% one, it's a big drop. Ideally though, you want an LED that has no flicker, which would mean when I use my meter, there is no detectable reading with uh, flicker frequency and of course no detectable reading with flicker percent. Now that we know all of this about flicker, how do we apply it to red light therapy devices? Does flicker matter? Well, some people have said, yes, like flicker is the worst thing in the world and you gotta make sure everything's flicker free. I don't think it's that important. Uh, yes, if you're sensitive to LEDs and, and flickering and stuff like that, then yeah, you wanna look for this. But if you have a panel that has some flickering LEDs in it, maybe you've seen one of my reviews and I've said, hey, it's got flicker in it. I don't think you should stop using it and return it and think it's the worst thing in the world. And here's why. Firstly, most of the issues people have with flicker are from chronic long-term exposure. You're sitting under a flickering LED for eight hours a day, five days a week, and you notice over time your eyes are always stressed or you feel a little bit you know, sore neck, a headache, or you just feel drained. Another example is you're looking directly at the light. Maybe it's a screen you're working on or you're a machinist and the light's right above your eyes. And you're again, you're exposed to it for a long time and it's right there when you're trying to concentrate on a particular job. We don't really have that issue when it comes to red light therapy devices. If you're like me, you may use your red light therapy panel for say five to 20 minutes a day, maybe three to five times a week. When you're using it, that's not much really in the scheme of things. The other thing I should point out is you're not necessarily looking right at the lights. For instance, I might have my back to it or I may be doing the side of my, of my body or face. And the other thing is um, you're typically not doing a cognitively demanding task when you're using red light therapy. In fact, a lot of the times I'm just doing breathing exercises or um, reading a book on my phone or just listening to a podcast. I'm not really uh, doing some high level brain activity work when I'm getting my red light therapy fix. Another thing is I've been involved in the red light therapy space for years. I've tested and used a lot of red light therapy panels. A lot of the earlier panels had a lot of flicker. I had no idea about it back then, but I did know that I had amazing benefits. I had amazing results when I'd use red light therapy devices. It's part of the reason I, I continue to review them and talk about it on my channel today. And it's the same with thousands of people out there. I get dozens of messages or comments a week where people say, wow, I finally, you know, I got a red light therapy panel, my knee pain's gone, or I feel so much better. Uh, every now and then I'll get some, I'll get a comment, it, it's very rare, but I'll get a comment where people say, oh, I used it, it wasn't as good as I hoped, or I didn't notice anything. But I can't think of any instance where people have used it and said, hey, I get a headache when I use it, or oh my God, my eyes hurt, or I feel dumb when I use it, or anything like that. I've never heard of any issues like that. I may have heard of one person who said, oh, it caused their skin to be a bit sensitive, uh, and that may be one of the very few negative uh, re responses that I've heard of. But if you think about all the glowing reviews, all the people that rave about red light therapy, if flicker was an issue, you wouldn't see as many. Or you would hear people say, hey, my joints feel better, but I get a headache. Uh, but we don't see that. So again, I'm not saying that's proof and hard evidence that's saying flicker doesn't matter, but it's something to factor in and think about when you are, if you are worried about flicker and red light therapy. Finally, and this is the most important, probably the best reason of all, today, most, if not all of the red light therapy companies out there, at least decent companies, they're pr producing products that have no flicker anyway. So it's becoming a bit of a moot point. Back in 2019, I compared six body panels, red light therapy body panels, uh, and I tried to determine the best body panel. I'll put links to that below if you want to check it out. Out of those six panels, five of them had flickering LEDs. One didn't, that, and that was the red light rising panel. Fast forward to 2021, I did the same comparison series, this time with 12 panels. The market's grown that much. Uh, so I tested 12 panels. Out of those 12 panels, only two of them had flickering LEDs. And I should note, out of those two panels, one of them was also featured in my 2019 comparison series. So it was an old panel. So pretty much that means if you're buying a panel today, uh, Flickr shouldn't be an issue. It's only really if you're buying older panels or perhaps you're buying super cheap panels from a company that's just started up and doesn't really know what they're doing. Pretty soon though, if they've been around long enough, they'll get enough feedback, they would have watched my reviews, and they'll know that, hey, we should, um, we should up our game a little bit here and have a panel that has no flickering 
LEDs. So now that you've watched all this, you might be thinking, well, does my panel have flickering LEDs in it? If you're unsure, check out my reviews on my YouTube channel. If I've reviewed your panel, I like I said earlier, I test for Flickr in it, so you can watch that video. Otherwise, check out my 2021 uh, comparison series with the 12 panels in it. Again, you can, you can see how your panel may perform. Or of course, reach out to the company that sold you the panel and ask them. If they don't know what they're talking about, that's yeah, not a good sign. What happens if you find out that, yes, your panel does have flickering LEDs? Should you stop using it? Should you return it? Uh, well, no, to be honest, I, I would keep using it. If you get, are getting good results from the panel, then great, keep using it. If you've just bought it, maybe you could return it, though you might be hit with a return fee or something like that. But again, remember, a lot of panels, you go back a couple years ago, Flickr was the norm, it was standard, it was commonplace, and people still had amazing results. It's just that today, now that we know flickering LEDs could be an issue and could cause a little bit of stress, and you have the option of buying a panel that has no flicker, you would be silly to get the panel that has the flicker, if you know what I mean. Um, if you get to choose between two of them, I'm gonna go with the one that has no flicker. But the great thing is, it's becoming the new norm anyway. I'd say in a few years time, it'll be hard to find a panel that has any flickering in it. And now if you're wondering, hey Alex, can you just tell me what panel to buy that's a good panel and has no flicker? Well, again, the Mito Pro 1500 from Mito Red Light. That has no flicker in it and is an excellent panel. Uh, the Biomax 900, Biomax 600 from Platinum LED, they have no flicker in it. Uh, check out Solbasium, check out Infrared. -E. Uh, I could go on and on, but I've done so many reviews and comparisons, so I'll put a link to that 2021 comparison series. Go watch that, even if you skip to the summary and see the key takeaways. Finally, if you want to know more about Flickr, whether it's Flickr and red light therapy or Flickr and eye health and lights in general, I'll put links to two really good articles. One of them's over at my website, alexfergus.com. That article is titled, Everything You Need to Know About Light, Flickr and Health. Alternatively, there's a great article by Andrew Latour, and that's posted over at his site, Gimbered, or gimbered.com, and that article is titled Flicker and Red Light Therapy, What You Need to Know. Both of those articles are superb resources. They cover lots of the science, lots of the background information on, on Flicker, but also lots of diagrams, lots of videos, uh, and lots of takeaway points. One key thing I will mention as well, a lot of people just video, um, light bulbs or their panels, maybe they do it in slow-mo and play it back. And if it's not flickering in the video, they think, hey, great, there's no flicker in my panel. I just wanna say that's not the best way to test for flicker. If everything lines up with your camera frame rate and the flickering percent, yeah, you will detect flicker in it. But there are also times where you won't detect that flicker if, if, the, uh, if the frequencies don't resonate. And that's why, again, I use a, a tool such as this to, to test uh, for Flickr. So I hope this video has covered everything you need to know about Flickr and red light therapy panels. But in a nutshell, don't worry about it. And if you are worried about it, then just go out, find a panel that has no Flickr in it, and away you go. And the good thing is, it's quite easy now to find panels that have no Flickr in their LEDs. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a like, a thumbs up. If you have any more questions, leave them below. Should also mention, if you want to purchase any red light therapy panel, be sure to use discount code Alex. It does save you a little bit of money and helps me continue to test and review products on this channel. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.